Alright, so today we're going to be going over how to start a dedicated server in 7 Days to Die. And the reason I'm doing that is because a few people have asked um, how to. And I thought it would be kind of a cool thing to do. So what you want to do is go into Steam. And instead of games, you want to go to Tools or Add Tools. And then you're going to look for um, 7 Days to Die. And then there is a link here called 7 Days to Die Dedicated Server. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can start 7 Days to Die and create a multiplayer server, or you can do a dedicated server and then start 7 Days to Die and connect to the dedicated server. We're going to go over the dedicated server method here. Now there's certain ports and things like that that you'll have to open up on your particular router. I'm not going to go into how to do that for your router because everybody has a different router but I will mention the ports during this video. So um, <clears throat> you're just gonna click install and then it's gonna ask you where you want to install. And I have a separate dedicated drive just for doing stuff like this. So I'm gonna put this in my um, D drive. And of course you're gonna have to come in here and you're gonna have to wait for um, this to download so we'll be right back all right so mine just finished downloading so what we're gonna do is we're gonna browse to a folder um, so I installed mine on my D drive but wherever you install it you're gonna browse to that area and it's gonna be underneath um, in just your normal if you only have one drive it's gonna be underneath your program files x86 steam Steam apps and then common and then you'll see a folder here for that and then you've got your configuration files here so configuration is done in XML so we're gonna edit this um, here I don't want to download that all right so the XML has a lot of settings in here and you're gonna want to uh, let me zoom in if I can. Oh, I can't zoom in. Well, that's fun. All right, so <clears throat> the first setting you want to change is your dedicated server name. And you're just going to put, uh, you know, whatever you want to call your server. For instance, My Death World. And then your server description. This shows up. Both of these show up in the Steam search, so you can put um, whatever you want to do here. I'm just putting a vanilla server. Uh, your website URL. If you want to have a server password, like, um, you know, not yours. And then login confirmation test, text. Um, and then your port. So. This is one of the first ports you're going to open, okay? So uh, the, port sh the port you want to uh, want the server to listen on, keep it in the range of 26900 to 26905 or 27115 uh, uh, to 2720. If you want PCs on the same LAN to find it as a LAN server. So if you are playing with a family member or something like that or you're having a LAN party, um, you can use these ports to just have it readily browsable by anyone. Um, this right here is the default port. We're just going to keep it default. Visibility. Now, visibility is a little different. Two equals public. One only show to friends. So these are people who are actually part of your uh, Steam network. And then zero for not listed. Now, if you don't want a bunch of random people joining your server or trying to join it, even if you have a password, you want to set that to zero. I usually set mine to zero so that nobody can find it. Um, and then we're going to go to max world transfer speed kilobytes per second. And what this is, is this is how fast your world or objects in your world will download to people who are connecting to it. Uh, and then this right here <clears throat> in the number of slots, this is the maximum number of players that you can have join your server. Um, you can have, I think, up to 64, if I'm not mistaken. Set that to whatever you want to, but remember, each person is going to be downloading this much data from your connection uh, during the time that they're playing. 
Uh, and then you can have reserve slots. So out of the maximum number of players count, uh, this is uh, the many slot, how many slots that can be used by players with a specific permission level. Um, so you can set different permission levels depending on who's connecting to your server. I don't really use this, so because I have mine hidden, I don't worry about it. Uh, server reserve slots permission 100. Required permission level to use our reserve slots above. So this is related to the number of slots you have reserved. Number of admin slots. Now I never join my own server as an admin anyway. I use Archon console to, count, to connect to it um, remotely. That way I can boot people. I can um, just do a bunch of different things. Um, and then here's how you can count to connect to it through Archon. This is the server port that you can connect to. This is the control panel. If you want to change um, the password here so that people can't just use the default, this make sure you always change your passwords in this file. Don't keep them as default unless you want other people controlling your server. Uh, and then you can also telnet to it through this address. So this is a web address that you can connect to. Uh, it has a control page. This is the telnet port. And this is the password. So I also recommend changing this password and this password and um, of course this password then if we go down to admin this is where you can list this is the XML where you can list the admins that are allowed to be admins on your server and this is based off of the person's steam ID as well this is the anti-cheat so if you're not running a vanilla server you want to make sure this is set to false so, so if you're running one of the mods as a server uh, if you set that to false, you should be good, especially if you know the people that are connecting to your server anyway, since we're doing vanilla work, keep that as true. Uh, max covered map chunks per player. This is the maximum amount, like so, viewable chunks that somebody can see at one time. Uh, persistent player profiles. This is if you want their profile to stay on the server um, while they're playing, so if they log out, log back in, they don't have to start all over again. I recommend doing that. And then here's your world. So if you randomly generate a world <coughs> seed for your server, meaning you go into seven days to die, you say generate a world. Um, this is the name of that world that you're going to be putting in there. This is where you can pick the different survival modes for your game. You know, if you don't want any zombies in your game or you just want to create a world or something like that, this is where you put your game mode for that. You'll have to look up those game modes though. <laughs> um, difficulty. So this is the level of difficulty for each of the different items. So like when you're in the uh, seven days to die menu and it's asking you what level of difficulty do you want? Um, two is the default. So when you just create a world and you're playing, um, zero is the easiest and five is the hardest, meaning everything comes at you all the time and give, never gives you a break. Uh, this is your player block damage, this is your AI block damage. I always set my AI block damage to 75, or I set the player block damage to 125. That way, it's a little more realistic for me. Um, <clears throat> this is the uh, block damage for AI during a blood moon, and then this is the XP multiplier. I rarely put this above 100, just because I think it's more fun to have to gain XP while you're playing. Uh, player safe zone level, if your player is less or equal uh, this level, he will create a safe zone. No enemies, enemies will respawn in that area. So if you're like level 5 in the game, you're pretty safe. Once you hit level 5, you know, you complete those first set of tasks that they give you at the beginning, then you're going to start generating um, zombies. Now this doesn't count necessarily on the mods. Those mods, they... Um, they modify this themselves so uh, don't count on that being the thing and then uh, player safe zone hours so when they first log into the world this is the number of hours in game that you have a safe zone created around you like a bubble uh, build and create um, if you want to go in creative mode you want to set this to true if you uh, don't then set it to false uh, and this is your day night cycle length and these are all in the menu too um, <clears throat> if you want items to drop on death, I normally don't do that because I think that sucks anyway. And normally when I'm playing or recording videos, I do uh, permadeath uh, where I don't even come back into the world anymore. 
Uh, drop on quit, so if the person logs off the server uh, and then logs back in, if you have persistent on, this will keep their items available on them when they, when they log back in. Bedroll, dead zone size, this is the radius around your bedroll that limits the amount of zombies or the spawn area around your bedroll, so this is number of blocks. So right now it's set to 15 blocks around my bedroll that no zombies will uh, spawn. If you have this at zero, <laughs> zombies can spawn right on your bedroll. And then the expiration time for that spawning. This means that the number of days a bedroll stays active after the owner was last online. So this is 45 days. So if somebody doesn't log into your server for 45 days, that bedroll is going to sit there. Their profile is going to be persistent and they can log back in and uh, that will remain in the game. After 45 days, their bedroll will be removed from the game and they can't log into that and they'll just randomly spawn in the map. Max spawn zombies. This is the total number of zombies that can spawn in your world. Um, this is the total number of animals. And this is the max allowed view distance. So this is number of blocks that a player can see details out. So even if they set theirs to 30, the server will limit them so that it reduces the amount of memory and data and things like that that your um, uh, server is transmitting online. And then enemy spawn mode. This is if you want to just completely not have zombies spawn into your world. So you can turn this off and enemies will not spawn into your world at all. Enemy difficulty. Uh, zero is normal. One is feral. So if you want all of your zombies to be feral, you just hit one. Zombie move. Uh, this is their move speed, movement speed, normal movement speed. So if you want them to always spawn uh, in nightmare mode, you can go zero, one, two, three, four. You set this to four, it's always going to be nightmare. Three is going to be sprint two is going to be run and one is going to be jog and zero is walk I always have my zombies walk uh, except for ferals I at least let them uh, at least let them run <laughs> oh sorry run and then zombie blood moon uh, speed will make it sprint or nightmare uh, sprint's more fun but we're gonna make this zero so if a sparrow does fawn during a blood moon it will get the run if it's during a blood moon and it's a normal zombie, they'll get the, they'll have to walk. Blood moon frequency. This is the number of days in game that the blood moon happens, and the blood moon range. If you have it set to zero, this is zero days from seven days that a blood moon will occur. Now, if you have it set to seven and you have this set to three, the blood moon can occur three days before or three days after your seven days. And then your warning is the time of day when you get the blood moon warning for that day um, minus seven makes the makes the red never show so you never know if it's a blood moon so if you really want to have a fun time set this to seven set this to three and set this to minus one and you'll never know um, when your blood moon is actually happening until you start getting overwhelmed by a horde and your blood moon enemy count this is how many zombies that can spawn in addition to your max uh, spawn maximum number of spawn enemies so you have 64 here and 8 here you have a possibility of 72 zombies I believe and these are the number of zombies that can be alive number of zombies that can be alive spawn at the same time at any time per player during a blood moon or horde so we can have a maximum of 64, but during a blood moon, if you have 10 players on your server, that's 80, um, that's 80 zombies that can spawn at the exact same time. Loot abundance, this is a percentage of how many times uh, something drops loot, um, what percentage of times that they'll actually drop loot. Uh, respawn, loot respawn is, um, every 30 days I think yeah 30 days and then airdrop frequency is every 72 hours so every three days airdrop marker um, I always turn this on because it's unless I'm playing some time where I don't care and I just randomly come upon the airdrops but if you don't know where these are in your world 
then there's a chance that you're just gonna run across these every two seconds and and then it takes up a memory on your server so <clears throat> if you have a beefy server don't worry about it put that defaults you don't have to you can just have it randomly show up party shared killed range um, so this is the range from another player that you get an XP bonus from their kills as well as they them getting bonuses from your kills and you've got player killing mode this is friendly fire uh, you can allow no killing which means you can't kill your friends one means you can kill your allies and then uh, two is kill strangers only three is kill everybody and then land claim um, this is your land claim size per player um, so if they put down a land claim block they can claim a one block radius around the land claim block and then remember that's a cube so one from the top caddy corners on each side of the block and then each side of the block um, sorry land claim count that's the number of blocks they can put down this is the number of blocks around that land claim basically that means you can't build in that land that land claim area enemies rarely spawn in that land claim area um, <clears throat> the likelihood that um, somebody can break a block in that land claim area uh, that you allow maybe makes it more difficult uh, and then the dead zone this is number of blocks uh, that you can place land claims apart and then the expiry time so the number of days a players can be offline before their land claim expires so if you have a friend that logs in maybe once every two weeks they put down a land claim block within their second week that land claim block will expire and you'll be able to build in that area land, land claim decay mode so land claims decay in the world um, you can set this to two which means that the land claim never decays so we're going to do that um, controls the offline players land claim decay slow fast none so if you're offline it doesn't decay land claim online durability so this is how durable that the land claim is when, it, when the player is online um, we set these to zero and they don't decay change the settings for your server and then you just have to simply save this and then we're going to close it and we're back in our folder all right so we've got the server started up and you can see here we've got the listener window when you hit enter on that it closes it brings up to the kid server and now i'm running uh, seven days to die on my local and you can see all of the let me pop this back up you can see all of the stuff that's actually um running here uh, i hope <laughs> Let me just check something. Yep. All right. So you can see all the stuff that's that's being created in the background. You can, if you want, <clears throat> if you're an admin on your own server, you can actually see when zombies spawn on the console. Um, window, like when you're running it locally on your machine, and you can also do it here in this this dedicated server so if you're in your base you're building stuff and you're kind of curious if stuff is spawning outside you can pull up this window and see if it's actually spawning now I'm loading my seven days to die <clears throat> loading the character models here To join a game and our let's see now in our configuration file we put we put uh, my death world in here okay so let's go back over here you can actually paste this in and you'll notice that it doesn't show up um, you can also look in our favorites we can look in our land games 
Um, if you're playing on a LAN and you keep those default ports, you should see a number pop up here after it's done scanning. These are peer-to-peer -peer games. These are uh, friends that are online. Um, this is their favorites in history and so on. So we don't actually have anything uh, set up. So we're going to keep this as um, our default. Now, I'll tell you about the ports and how to get your external IP address if you want somebody to connect to your server, server outside of your network here in a little bit. Um, but this is that port that you mentioned uh, in the config file. And then this is just the default IP address for your local network adapter on your computer. So this would be like you starting a LAN game. So let's see if the server is done. Uh, yeah, it looks like it is done. So we'll go back over here and connect. And it's going to ask me for the password. So if we look in our file, the password that I put in is not yours. And I can paste that in too. We can see not yours. Submit. And now the server is actually loading. And we're going to look at this console window here. And you can see player, the furthermore, owner ID, da 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 da. So <clears throat> those are all related to Steam. Um, I'm going to censor that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this um, it's booting up the server basically and, and pulling in the configuration settings and everything in the, on the background now if I want somebody else to connect to the server I can do that as well having them put in my IP address on my local network alright now there's a command that you can use to uh, find out your local IP if you're on a LAN so if we do a command prompt here we can type in ipconfig space slash all and this is my local adapter that I'm using so right here is that IP address that I can use it's called the IPv4 address now if you're running IPv6 uh, it's a little more com complicated than that um, try and run IPv4 it's, it's easier on your local network you don't really need to run IPv6. You don't have that many um, devices that can connect to your machine, your machines anyway. Um, but you would connect to this IP address instead of that 128 that I that I told you. Now this is that configuration uh, screen that I told you about. This is thanks. Let's let's die. It's that confirmation text that you actually uh, got into the game. Continue. Now it's creating my player profile. Now remember, we set it to persistent, meaning when I log out and I log back in, all of my stuff is going to be saved. And where I'm at in the world is going to be saved. And what I'm going to be doing in the world is saved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you use the default Navis game, then you are going to be right where you left in the game. So if you started building something locally on your machine, um, you can continue to build on your your local so yeah that's how you do it and now my friends can join and we can play in my default Navis gain world pretty cool I swear there's something down there yep there they are oh yeah and zombies can swim now I have no idea where he went Anyway, um, let's talk about how to get your um, IP. When, when I leave this world, it's going to continue to run. And that means the day-night cycle, stuff growing, um, uh, stuff spawning in the game. We'll probably pause, actually. Um, but if, if, you know, the normal stuff that I put in the game is going to keep running. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, hop off of here and we're going to take a look at some of the other stuff that you can find out. Now, see here, the dedicated server is still running in the background and you can see, um, it tells you which port and IP address that I was connecting to and it doesn't tell you uh, my IP that I was connecting from, but that's okay, it'll be in the server logs. Alright, so now if I want to shut this down, 
I can actually just close the window. You really want to shut down? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so now that's shut down. All right, so you're going to go to um, HTTPS. Actually, we're just going to type this in real quick. My external IP.com. <clears throat> and then it's going to tell you what your external IP address is right here <clears throat> and what port it found that information. And this is, this is the port that your friends and, and family and stuff like that would connect to externally. Um, <clears throat> and the way you're going to do that is you're going to open up specific ports on your um, router. So the ports that you want to open up are 26900 or that range that we gave you. And if you're using that one, you're going to use UDP 26900 to 26902. Uh, also, that's a port range that you're going to open. Uh, if you're that's if you're running on PC. If you're running on a PlayStation, because they did put this on uh, PlayStation 4, I think. Um, and then you're going to do TCP IP connection uh, port 1935 and range is going to be 3478 to um, 3480 and then if you're doing this on Xbox your port is going to be um, 3074 and then you're going to do um, 3074 to uh, I believe 3076 is your port range. You know, notice it's going to be whatever port that you select from your server, and then the port range is going to be that port plus two. Okay, and that's for each of the different platforms. And what that is, those ports are where it listens for external connections from other people connecting to your server and logging in. Um, and they can pick a random port in between those if one has more connectivity than another or uh, there's more traffic going to one than another um, that's the port that they're going to connect to um, so that is it for this episode um, if you have any problems with this please leave a comment down below I can't give you specific advice on what your um, router settings are you're going to have to contact your uh, router or manufacturer and find out how to open up these ports uh, remember this is the UDP range and the other one is the TCP range okay so uh, for PC your TCP range is 26900 for PlayStation it's 1935 oops dyslexic <laughs> and your Xbox uh, port is going to be 3074. Alright, that's it for today's episode. I'm the Furthermore, and have a good one.